This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 8, six days to the moon and back. Tonight, a look ahead at man's first journey to the moon. Brought to you by Western Electric, manufacturing and supply unit of the Bell System as part of their continuing coverage of important news events. Reporting from CBS News, Apollo headquarters at Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. The countdown for Apollo 8 is on. The clocks in the launch control center here started on schedule at 9.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, counting off the final hours before three men are to start on that historic first journey to the moon at 7.51 a.m. tomorrow morning. Earlier today, problems with Apollo 8's fuel cells threatened the flight, but they were solved. And then there was worry about the weather. Fog was predicted for launch time, and because visual tracking is a must for the first few seconds of the launch, that could have caused a delay. But later tonight, the forecast improved, and the chances appear bright for an on-time departure for the moon tomorrow morning. If the mission should have to be canceled by weather tomorrow, however, another try will be made on Sunday morning, and that would put the astronauts in orbit around the moon on Christmas Day. Commanding the mission, Air Force Colonel Frank Borman. He's been in space once before, making the 14-day Gemini 7 mission three years ago. Borman is 40, married, and has two teenage sons. Number two man in the spacecraft, Navy Captain James Lovell. He was Borman's co-pilot on Gemini 7, and then commanded Gemini 12. He has spent 425 hours in space, more than any other human. And after Apollo 8, well, by himself, have spent more time in space than all of the Soviet Union's cosmonauts. He is 40, married, and has four children, two boys and two girls. The third man up is Air Force Major William Anders, a rookie. This flight to the moon, his first trip into space. Anders is 35, married, and has five children, four boys and a girl. Their mission is the most difficult ever attempted and the most dangerous. They start with man's first ride aboard that 36-story Saturn V. Two other Saturn Vs have been launched successfully, and the rocket now is judged ready to carry men. From the launch pad into orbit, 11 and a half minutes, ending with Apollo 8 still connected to its third stage. It will stay in Earth orbit for almost two revolutions while the crew makes sure that everything is working satisfactorily. Then, almost three hours after liftoff, near Hawaii, the third stage engine will be restarted, driving Apollo 8 out of its Earth orbit and onto a course for the moon. If the engine fails or some fault in Apollo 8 itself causes mission controllers to call off the try for the moon, the spacecraft will spend up to 10 days circling the Earth. But if that engine works properly, Borman, Lovell, and Anders are on the way toward their rendezvous with the moon, crossing some 230,000 miles of space in 66 hours making minor course corrections if needed on the way. Then, 69 hours after launch, Apollo 8 will be just 70 miles from the moon. At this point, its rocket engine will be fired, slowing it for lunar orbit just before 5 a.m. next Tuesday morning, the day before Christmas. During this critical maneuver, the spacecraft is behind the moon, not in contact with mission control here on Earth. And so it won't be known for almost 20 minutes if the engine started if it fired long enough, and if Apollo 8 is indeed in orbit around the moon. If the engine doesn't start, or if the astronauts uh, detect something wrong and elect not to start it, they merely will swing around the moon and start back to Earth. If it does work, the astronauts will start up to 20 hours in moon orbit, circling the moon once every two hours at 3,700 miles an hour. Their first two orbits will be egg-shaped, and then on the third, the orbit will be made circular, 70 miles high. While in the television pictures twice, and take hundreds of photographs and motion pictures, concentrating on areas where future Apollo astronauts plan to land. Early Christmas morning, the most critical maneuver will take place. Apollo's rocket engine will be restarted in order to take the astronauts out of lunar orbit and start them back toward Earth. Now that maneuver, like the one that put them into orbit, will be done while the spacecraft is behind the moon, out of contact with Earth. So it won't be until Apollo 8 races back around the moon 
that we will know if the engine worked perfectly and that the crew is indeed on the way back home. If that rocket fails, the men will be trapped in moon orbit as surely as would earlier astronauts have been trapped in Earth orbit if their retro rockets had failed. Once started back, the return flight will take 58 hours. During that time, several mid-course corrections may be made to make sure that Apollo 8 enters the atmosphere at the correct and the critically precise angle. If it comes in too steeply, the sudden breaking against the atmosphere could crush the astronauts. Or if the approach is too shallow, the spacecraft will skip off the atmosphere like a stone off water, go back into space, and the astronauts will be lost. After a successful entry into the atmosphere that speeds up to 25,000 miles an hour when temperatures on the heat shield will get up to 4,000 degrees, next Friday, six days after liftoff, the spacecraft will drop into the Pacific Ocean 1,000 miles from Hawaii. And appropriately enough, the nearest spot of land will be Christmas Island. Holidays. Well, the answer is simple. The Earth and the in the right position for there to be sunlight on the moon, the launch site, and the recovery area at the right times. That period begins tomorrow. The crew is ready, the rocket is ready, the spacecraft is too. If there were no launch this month, a similar mission could not be flown until the middle of next month, delaying the moon landing program by a month when there are not that many months left if the United States is to meet its goal of man on the moon by the end of the decade. More on the flight of Apollo 8 in a moment.